Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Dear friends in Christ, looking at our theme for today, I can honestly say that I've had my fair share of come to Jesus moments. Uh, in fact, I shared one with you several weeks ago when I talked about the car ride I had with Pastor Steve Cosberg on 169 and at that stoplight in Jordan where he asked me those important questions, who is this for? Is this for you or is it for them so that they would know Jesus? But you know, I had a, another come to Jesus moment probably around this time about a year ago, give or take, and it was when I stepped on the scale at home and looked at the numbers on that scale and genuinely wondered whether or not I was doing what God would have me to do with my health, whether or not I was actually taking care of myself, whether or not I was actually being a good steward of the life that God had given me. Now, I can also honestly tell you that I've had more than just two come-to-Jesus moments in my life, okay? I will tell you that. In fact, a lot of them came when I was a lot younger, and my parents were teaching me things about life and what I would need for life, okay? Maybe you can relate to that. But how about you? Have you had those come-to-Jesus moments in your life? Moments that cause you to pause, reflect, and even make plans as to how you're going to navigate that specific moment. You know, it's fascinating how those come-to-Jesus moments come into our lives. I mean, the examples that I gave, one was in a car on a random highway in a stoplight in Jordan. Another one happened on a $20 scale from Target, right? I mean, they happen in all different ways and in all circumstances, and maybe that's how it happens for you in that car or on that scale. But maybe it's happened in other places, like a pink slip from the HR department, or at the bottom of another bottle, or even at the side of a casket of a friend, a loved one, a family member. They happen in all sorts of places and all sorts of ways. And when they happen, they often leave us at that crossroads. Right? Do we just keep going with what we've been doing? Do, do we just keep moving forward in what we have? Or do we change directions? Do we take another path? Do we take another avenue to get to the place where we need to be? You see, this is why I believe they call them come to Jesus moments because they are moments where we should come to Jesus. The question is, do we actually do that? In those moments, in those decisions, in that planning, do we take the time to come to Jesus, to talk with him, to seek his guidance, his direction, his wisdom? Or do we look at other things? Other things that feel like or seem like they can help us get through the things that we're experiencing in that time and in that place. Kind of like the manager in our gospel text for today from Luke chapter 16. Because he truly was at a come to Jesus moment, wasn't he? He was finding out that he had lost his job. That the owner of the property or whatever it was was done with him. There was mismanagement left and right, and he was going to lose his job. And it was a come-to-Jesus moment. And we know that because of how Jesus describes that moment for the manager in the text. Did you catch that? What does he do? He pauses, he reflects, and then he makes a plan as to how he's going to get out of the mess that he finds himself in. Kind of like you and I would do if we were in his shoes. Now, was it a good plan? Eh, I mean, it's no better than the previous plan that was laid out in the previous parable just before our selected text. If you look to the screen there, you'll see that plan laid out. Just listen as I read and see which parable it might be. It says, And he was longing to be fed with the pods that the pigs ate, and no one gave him anything. But when he came to himself, he said, How many of my father's hired servants have more than enough bread, but I perish here with hunger? 
I will arise and go to my father and I will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Treat me as one of your hired servants. So what's the parable there? Prodigal son, oh, more confidence than that, guys. Come on. I know it's early, but we got this. The prodigal son, right? It's the prodigal son. The parable of the son who who wished his father was dead, took the inheritance that was going to be his, and then went and spent it all on lavish living, and then found himself in a pig pen at a come-to-Jesus moment. And we know that because what did we see? That the son paused. He reflected. And then he made a plan as to how he was going to get out of the mess that he found himself in, much like you and I would do if we were in his shoes. Now, was it a good plan? Eh. You know, it's probably no better than the plans that you and I come up with when we find ourselves in those moments, in those times, in those places. Because when we're there, we do come up with plans. Don't we? And and don't get me wrong, they are well-thought-out plans. You know, we make pros and cons lists. We we go down every avenue and every street and every road, just making sure that we've got all of our bases covered. We, We go down every rabbit hole just to make sure that everything is set, that we haven't missed anything. We even talk to our family members. We talk to our friends. We talk to our coworkers about the plan just to get their thoughts, their insights, just to make sure we didn't miss anything only to find out we still missed one thing. And that was taking the time. In the midst of all of that planning, talking to everybody, thinking about everything, and never taking the time to talk to our God in Christ. To go to Him. To really come to Jesus in those crossroads, in those moments. And that's too bad for us, dear friends. Because what we would find there is something that is more than enough to get us through those times. More than enough to to give us wisdom and discernment and direction on how we're going to get through this mess that we find ourselves in. Something that the manager and the prodigal son didn't even expect as they tried to carry out their plans. Because we saw in the text with the manager, he carries out his plan. He, He cuts everybody's bill by a certain amount, and he does so with the thought that when he's actually fired, when he's actually canned, he can be with them. They'll take him into their homes. They'll take care of him. Everything will be good. But did you notice? Not one of those customers welcomed him. In fact, there was only one person who actually welcomed him after his plan. Did you see who it was? It was the owner. It was the owner. And even with the prodigal son, he had his plan. He had rehearsed the script over and over and over again, hundreds if not thousands of times on the way back to his father's house. He had gone it over in his head over and over and over again, and when he saw his dad, he thought he could carry out the plan. He thought he could tell him everything he had said, but he didn't even get a chance to finish. Because we're told in that parable that while he was still a long way off, the father ran after him embraced him, hugged him, welcomed him back as his son. And if you want to know the extreme measures of that, he ran in sandals and in a robe that looks like this, okay? You don't see people running marathons in things like these, okay? That's how much he loved his son. That's how much he wanted to to welcome him back. And it really shows even with all the planning, even with all the understanding and thoughts and thinking and everything, there's still one thing that they did not expect. One thing that they did not count on. And that was the abundant grace that was shown to them. 
Dear friends, that's the grace that our God in Christ gives to us. It's the grace that comes from Christ to us each and every day. It's a grace that gives us strength and encouragement to keep moving in our lives. It's a grace that that gives us wisdom and understanding and discernment and direction as to how we should move in the various places we find ourselves in. It's the grace that's more than enough to get us through the messes that we find ourselves in in our lives. It's the grace that is a gift freely given to you in those come to Jesus moments, but also in every moment, in every time, in all of our lives. And you know, honestly, when I was reflecting on the text this past week and looking at the different things involved with this text, you know, those come to Jesus moments are powerful times in our lives. But you know, the grace that I need in my life, I can't wait for those come to Jesus moments to happen. Because I need that grace every single day, if not every single moment of every single day. And, and waiting for the next come to Jesus moment just doesn't work. There's not enough of those in my life to enjoy and to embrace and to live in the grace that is mine through Christ each and every day. And I know the same is true for you. And so, dear friends, don't wait for the car rides. Don't wait for the the numbers on a $20 scale. Don't wait for the pink slip from HR. Don't wait for the bottom of another bottle. Don't wait for the casket. Take the moments. Take the, the pauses, the reflections, and spend time with God in his word, in prayer, coming to him and receiving that grace that is yours through Christ. And you know, if you need to make a plan because that's who you are, then plan on resting and relying on the grace that comes from Jesus Christ for you. Because in those moments, in those times at those crossroads, that grace is powerful. It's life-changing, if only for that moment, if only for that time, reminding you that wherever you go, wherever you end up, even whatever decision you make, your God in Christ goes with you and is with you always. So God's blessings to you as you have those come to Jesus moments. God's blessings to you as you experience the grace that not only comes in those moments, but as Christ comes to you daily. Amen? Amen.